is now being recorded. Hey guys, thanks for dropping in. This is our first edition of our VAMH video podcast. On this episode, we had a chance to speak to Michigan-based Deepfall while in support of Nonpoint and Hell Yeah on the Celebration of Life of Vinnie Paul. Their new album dropped in October entitled Broken, which their video Wasted soon followed, which we'll see during this episode. Remember to check us out on Spotify, iHeartRadio, and social media outlets. Enough with the intro, let's check in with D. A little bit of history, especially with uh, two of you. I know you brought him back, coming from well, Tennessee. Tennessee, yeah. Yeah. Explain a little bit about that. So I moved, I was, I was in my old band, and it was just a little cover band. Um, moved to Tennessee for about four years. Um, about three and a half years of that. After that, I get called by Tim. Asking me if um, I could come back to Michigan to do it. I said, well, you got to figure something out to get back there. So Tim moved me back to Michigan and jumped in with the old lineup. And that one didn't work out too well. So now we have this lineup. It's pretty much long story short. Cool. And then how'd you get back? I, I moved like literally. I paid to move him back. Uh, I'm like, all right, if that's all, that's, if that's all your excuses, uh, here's some money. Here's, some here's money. a moving truck. Yeah. Let's go. Oh, oh by the way, I'll have to find a place to live. Yeah, gave me a down payment on my house that you know I lost in a divorce. But <laughs> we, we wanted we wanted to, to move into a serious project, and, and I knew he was the the front man. We we've been writing and recording since he was 17, I think. Somewhere in there. Yeah. Very cool. Um, I see that you're out of Grand Rapids. Ish. I see. Ish. Yeah, ish. <laughs> ish. Uh, we're out of Greenville, but we tell people Grand Rapids because when, we, when we're when we out here like this and we say Greenville, we go, South Carolina? No, that's not gotcha. sure. Nobody knows where Greenville is. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Broken was released in October, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then um, how's the response on it so far? I mean, we're getting a lot. We're getting a lot of really positive feedback from it from all the stations that carry it that mm -hmm. we're playing it. Um, we're getting, we get five to ten ads per week on stations, so oh, cool. we're doing pretty good on that front too. We're we're, we're getting pretty close to uh, almost yeah. sold out of the ones that we have on our bus right now because people come, they want something. Cool. To them. I mean, people it's are like it's definitely our hottest sell seller at the merch table right now. That's nice. Awesome. Uh, the video wasted. Um, give us some background on that. Also, what's the song about? Okay, so, so I can I can I can kind of tell you a little bit about what the song's about. I don't really like to tell too many people about what the music's about. Mm -hmm. um, but all in a nutshell, the original lineup when we came back, um, we were all sitting around Tim's computer desk, and um, I'd had the song previously like I'd been working on it and I could never get it to go anywhere um, so I, we brought it here we kind of redid everything and we were all sitting around this desk everybody was pissed off at something and like, so it turned out to be kind of like our battle song you know um, we had Matt Doherty one yep yeah. yeah and then we had Matt Doherty come into the, in the studio with us and kind of cut everything up kind of tried to make it a little bit more um, single approving, I guess. Sure. And he did Say like the down and dirty, dirty, dirty one, and then you had the more radio. Yeah, yeah, it used to be a lot like longer, seven and, uh, and, a half. and there was really no chorus. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Swallow your pride, put your knuckles on, chill out, flop this time, chill 
So, I mean, now that you're talking about the lyric side of things, do you feel that your your fan base gets your lyrics, or do you feel more like so, that there's an interpretation there for each person? Everybody's interpretation is different, uh -huh. and that's one of the reasons why I don't like to tell people, like, this song was written about this part of my life or mm -hmm. about this subject, because once you do that, the listener now thinks that it's about that, and you're just not going to connect with it. There's no mystery to it. There's no connection, yeah, you know sure. what I mean? Um, I've had people come up to me, especially by the song Cancer, come up to me and say, wow, this song has helped me through, you know, my father with mm -hmm. cancer and this and that. And I'm like, that's great. It's not anything that I really wrote it about, but that's great that it helped you. So I don't, sure. I don't like to, I don't like to tell people. Fair enough. And then um, your writing process, do you feel that it's lyrics to riffs or do you feel it's the other way around or is it a combination of both? For the majority, it's riffs to lyrics. Like, um, Ava has brought a couple in. Um, actually, when he was doing his audition, I told him, I'm like, you gotta, you gotta write a riff, give me a chorus, give me verses, give me a bridge, and just send it to me. So he sent me that, and then within 20 minutes, I had an entire song written out of what he sent me, and I sent it back to him. So It was within <coughs> a day we had a whole song pretty much written. Yeah, yeah. Nice. It, was, it was pretty nice. But usually, yeah, the, we usually like to feed our lyrics from what the music makes us feel. Okay, so the, I mean, you, you basically have a formula in that sense then that... Um, the not formula a is thing to never have a formula. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. It's still being, it's still being... Yeah. Right. Formulated. Really thing right. Right. To figure right. Out. right. Yeah. I mean, formula. we could be sitting here and I would have something come in my head and then I'd save it until Ava or Max or somebody comes up with a riff and I'll try to figure out a way to use it that way too as well. So there's really not too much of a strict formula that sure. we... Um, looking at this tour, I mean, how did you get picked up for the Hell Yeah Nonpoint tour? The the short version is we played several shows in a short period of time with Soil mm -hmm. um, as an opener. We just happened to get thrown on an opener with them twice in Michigan, once at the Eclectic Room. And then we saw that Tim King's label put out a, Pavement Entertainment put out a solicitation, hey, we're looking for some bands to add. Mm -hmm. We submitted to it, Tim liked what he heard and, and went forward with us, and then through him, he started showing us some opportunities that got us hooked up with, with the agents that we're working with now that have mm -hmm. gotten us connected on all these things. Oh, cool. Um, and that all happened like in a very short period of time. Like, like, oh, very oh, nice, nice. Like I heard quick. Our third soil show was February. I think we signed on with them in April, and then signed on to M7 in, in June. Oh. And then jumped on our first tour in October. Very good. Um, during this tour, I mean, how many shows have you had so far? 20. 20? Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, well, just for two. Well, yeah, we started with Texas Hippie Coalition, so we kind of blend them together because we've been on the road for a month. But, mm -hmm. um, month and we've been on the road for almost a month and two weeks. Now. But yeah. with Hell Yeah, this is, I don't know, somewhere around show eight or nine out of yeah. 28. No one had at least like 17 left. Yeah. Well, we or something played like 20 or so, and there's 18 left, I believe. That's awesome. Um, out of those shows, do you have anything that you can bring up that might be like your showcase or even like something hilarious that happened during that tour so far? <laughs> oh, I love it. I know that. Like, 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 <laughs> the whole yeah tour? Or are you yeah. talking about any of the touring? You like, know what, touring? honestly? Give it the whole year. I don't yeah. know, you guys. THC guys. They very quickly became family. Yeah. We played. Uh, we played. I'm, I, we've got. We've got to tell them. We got to. Oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Um, Daytona? You were talking about Daytona? What's that? What were you, what were you talking about? I don't know. He never brings people up on stage. And we go oh, yeah. to the yeah. end of the stage with him. He always yeah, does like a big exit cool. and speech. And uh, he Sweet. brought us up. That was pretty cool. Yeah, that was Very incredible. cool. Yeah, the, our last show with them. They brought us up for their final yeah. little ceremony that they do. Yeah. So shout out to Big Dad Rich. Yeah. Nice. It's cool to be on the. For for me as a drummer, you know the whole. Remembering Vinny, Vinny Paul, yeah, the reason this whole thing's going, yeah. So it's cool from a drummer standpoint for me because, you know, when when you come to the show, um, not to give anything away, but they they kind of have a, a cool part that remembers a little bit of him, and um, you know, just from a drummer standpoint, it's it's humbling the first night to see that and know sure. that, you know, I'm watching that. Like I mean, he was there, he was with this band, and you mm -hmm. know, it's cool to you know, Chad's on, you know, the tour and stuff, and. 
from his mundane days. It's just it's just, it's an honor to be on the field. Yeah. For for you know everybody, but it's definitely from a drummer standpoint, it's cool for me still. Yeah, I think uh, for me it's cool to just analyze Christian and Tom playing guitar and just seeing how they do things. It's uh, it's very motivational. It just makes me want to just go back in the practice room and just get better at guitar. So right. it's cool to see that. Yeah. yeah. But it's not a, an intimidating thing by no, no means. You feel, well, no, no, like, you feel at home with musicians. Like yeah, that, but yeah, it's weird because I grew up listening to non-point. Like I tell them all the time. Mm -hmm. My first... <laughs> Xbox gamer tag was non point sixteen, so it's like weird. Like years later, and I'm torn with them, but it's like cool because I don't yeah. feel like weird around them because we've all like worked so hard. I know they've been working hard for so long. It's like when we see them, it's just like a cool like camaraderie. Yeah, I've been able to make friends pretty quickly. Yeah, and then you get with these bigger bands, and when you first jump on tour, you get kind of like nervous, I guess. But since the first tour with both bands, the THC and non point and Hell Yeah here, they've been so welcoming. They've That's been, awesome. They've been so cool, so down to earth. It's very cool to hear. Makes it a lot, a lot easier to do what we have to do. Who, who gets the upper hand? Um, since you've been around on tour for almost a year, mm -hmm. who gets the upper hand on decision making date on a daily basis with you guys? Our fearless leader, Tim yeah. King. I think that's a question. I also yeah. carry the title of tour manager on this journey. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yep, I sleep in a 55 degree bus at night. You can always add more blankets. <laughs> <laughs> you can't take all seven. <laughs> yeah, there's a certain point you're like, you're going to get so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Influences with you guys. I mean, not individually per se. What do you feel that you're kind of the majority well, rules? I don't think we get that yet because these guys are brand new mm -hmm. and we yeah. have yet to finish writing something to really pull in the influences yet. Yeah, it's just yeah. everything. It's not really one. easy to categorize the <laughs> album either. I mean, I always ask other people, you know, who do we sound like to you? Right. And nobody can answer. Yeah, I, I, I try to pinpoint it to explain it to somebody. We think it's great. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I honestly, you and I even talked, you know, and it, it was it was pretty tough to put a thumb on it. Yeah, we've been told. I've, I've been told that I haven't sounded anything from Sully from Godsmack all the way to David Draymond, which is funny because I've never been told I sound like David Draymond until I shaved my head. <laughs> <laughs> um, to Chester, I've been told to sound like Lincoln Park. I'm like, that's that's fine. Whatever you guys think, yeah. this is great. How yeah. many official videos do you have out right now? Two I'm, official. Yeah, yeah, I saw the monsters, right? Yep. Yeah, and then yeah. wasted. Okay. Yeah. Monsters, that whole idea and whole premise of that. What was what was the idea behind that video? Um, the video, like if if you watch the video, um, the video really does. That's one of the songs that we kind of give the it gives the, away the, the, story. Gives yeah. away the meaning of the song. You know, um, basically, it's going through life when you're gonna blame everybody else, and then sooner or later, you're gonna have to look at yourself and decide, okay. What's yourself that's put you in all these situations? It's yourself that's made you who you are right now. And if you're down about it, if you only got yourself to blame, which is why in the end of the video, we've got me screaming at myself in a chair, kind of back and forth. It was really good camera effect. Yeah, anyway. yeah, that was. But, <laughs> but yeah. Um, so, what are you guys currently listening to? I mean, like, what's? I know everybody's got their in the hell yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, not point. Yeah, no, I. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, but like, uh, what inspires you on the creative side? What do you listen to to kind of get your, you know, blood pumping? Mm. Seven does a big one for me. Yeah. I, I, like prog metal, yeah. almost too. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have some metal influences. I listen to Lamb of God. Um, you know, um, Alter Bridge is, you know, another favorite of mine. Seven does a big one. Though. Morgan Road for me, if, you know, being a drummer, he influenced me when I first started. So, sure. And now it's gonna be. An honor to also play with him later in the year too. Oh, nice! Um, you'll see us um, towards the end of the end of the year. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Playing with him, so that that for me, Seven Dust does it for me. So anything that's aggressive like that, just a rock drummer. So. Okay. Yeah, I'm, always, I'm always searching for ways to integrate the keyboard into the rock slash metal band in modern times. So yeah, that's impressive too. Bring me the to horizon. Yeah. You know, I. I they use a lot of looping and stuff, but mm -hmm. it's still the same concept to me. Well, for me, I love Avenged Sevenfold, so I always listen to them. But I've also been trying to get into like other stuff, like All That Remains, the guitar oh, yeah. riffs and that are amazing. Yeah. Um, just to get more ideas for songwriting and stuff. Um, I also like listening to like a 
like a Bach, just like mm -hmm. um, classical music and flamenco music. I love a lot. Sure. So, yeah. Al Demiola was one of my favorites at one point. <laughs> this guy. Oh, you know, yeah. <clears throat> um, I listen to a lot of progressive metal. Um, yeah. Me and him listen to a lot of like deathcore. We're into some really heavy stuff. Yeah. Um, kind of, kind of all over. Um, I listen to if you've heard of Chon, they call them the best elevator music you've ever heard. Um, <laughs> is that really? Yeah, yeah music, music basically. Yeah. yeah. But uh, a lot of different stuff. Um, but I grew up basically listening to this sound. Like when I first uh, uh, auditioned, I told him I was like, "This is stuff I grew up on," and just um, down to the riffs and the choruses. Mm -hmm. um, kill switch engage type stuff, breaking Benjamin. Sure. That's usually what I'm listening to. You know, like we talked earlier, any sponsors, any endorsements you want to talk about? Um, upcoming events, like you said, about seven, uh, 7 Dust? Yeah, so the 7 Dust is between Christmas and New Year's. It's December 28, 29, 30. Dates are Georgia and Florida. It's a, an acoustic Christmas three three night thing with them it's like house of blues and revolution or something mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. so they're doing an acoustic set we're doing an acoustic version of basically the set that we're doing here for those three dates and then in february we're back out with alter bridge for the oh, entire nice. month and clint lowry has his own yeah. side project yeah. that's actually the direct support on that lineup too so it'll be us and then clint's project and alter oh nice bridge on that run very cool. Congrats with that too. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, again, I know was was it? I mean, we're a lot of Warren Star stuff. Yeah, Warren Star, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Warren Star clothing outfits us, and mm -hmm. um, they're all good people. So, oh. yeah, we always try to you know tag it in like either the article or the video. Or, yeah. yeah, I mean, Pavement like, Entertainment and M Seven Agency are who we're pretty much tagging every everywhere mm -hmm. we go because they're the ones that are keeping this going for us. I know uh, Tom George actually. Had us come out to talk to you guys for yep, tag. Yep. So Tom mm -hmm. is definitely doing a lot for us on throughout this entire process. Nice. Yeah, we're all growing our sponsors too. So we get dollars and bass. So mm -hmm. We well, now one for an energy too, drink. So, so yeah, there's so any energy drinks energy. out there that want to sponsor a rock band? Well, I'm sure there is. I'll try to sponsor Starbucks wants to sponsor that's me. What I'm just gonna put that out there. What, what was that one? Starbucks wants to sponsor me. I'll put that out there. This is Rich with Deep Ball. Hey, this is Max. This is Nick. This is Anthony. This is Taylor. This is Tim. And you're listening to Voices in My Head.